I'd just like to remind you whatever happens next, I'm only partially at fault for. You wanted this. Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. White eyes were staring at you from the darkness. A gaping mouth that was dripping with salvia and anticipation. Your pickaxe striking the stone repeatedly, producing a sharp noise of metal meeting rock, each heat causing the creature immense pain, then made its head twitch with maddening fury. The monstrosity was patient, though. Its deadly claws pulled up to silence its steps. But you were so focused on your work. Face lit up by the pale light of the torches. That you had carefully placed on the walls. But then you stopped. The monstrosity's eyes widened as he bowed down to pick up a shiny piece from the broken rubble. Excited you shook. It was a diamond, shiny and turquoise. You held it against the light of the torch next to you, pure and beautiful. You spit on it, rubbing your hands across its surface to get rid of the grime covering it. But in its mysterious glimmer, you noticed movement. Two pearly white pinpricks blinking at you. Reacting with the speed of a trained professional miner, you pulled your emergency iron sword from your back and turned around. But there was nothing. Just the gaping abyss of the abandoned mineshaft's halls you haven't yet explored. A bead of sweat ran down your neck. You could have sworn you had seen something. Wait, there was something right around the corner. Gulping, you stepped towards it. It was a puddle that hadn't been here before. You poked it with your weapon. It was a translucent slime, and it wasn't like any slime you had ever seen. It wasn't green. Your heart pounded with fear, and so you quickly and carefully secured the diamond in your backpack. An uneasy feeling had overcome you. So you simply turned on your heels and walked the somewhat familiar lit halls you had come from. The mineshaft was going deep into the frigid mountain. So much so that you had constructed a camp around the middle of the way back. There you had a large storage of dried fruit and some water. A bedroll and some chests filled with stuff you maybe had need for later but didn't yet require. It was well lit with lanterns and secured by iron doors. The only place in the underground that was truly safe. Your footsteps were reverberating from the walls. Talk, echo, 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 talk. The same rhythm as your feet carried you forward. The same sounds. Until echo, echo, talk, talk. You'll stop dead in your tracks. The echo remained, and then there were no more sounds, absolute silence. 
deafeningly so. You didn't even dare breathing. It was right behind you. Its breath shallow, arms stretched out, ready to embrace you into a deadly hug that would crush every bone in your body. But being so close to you, it picked up another scent, a smell that was sweet, making its heart beat faster with hunger, anticipation. This was too easy. It wanted to toy more with you. Turn around, turn around, please turn around. The sound of a single droplet of liquid made you rapidly spin behind yourself. Sword dawn, and there it was. For less than a second out of the furthest corner of your eye, you saw a thin, clawed foot vanish in a one-by-one-meter block hole in the wall. But how was that even possible? Considering the size, it looked way too big to push through that. You turned around so quickly you almost fell, rushing towards the familiar holes, torches and markers that you had set carefully. With all you weight, you threw yourself against the stone button that opened the iron door of your base camp. You felt like you had been running for hours. Were you sure you were safe here? You didn't want to stay for too long. You assumed whatever hid within the mine shaft would not chase you down on the surface. So once you are mentally prepared, and ready to leave, you opened the exit door of the base camp, only to be met by a quiet You awoke in your bed, inhaling deeply, feeling air fill your lungs. Opening your eyes, you looked around, oak planks, the smell of pine resin, a workbench, few chests, red carpet, singular window, a furnace. This was your hunting hut. Right, right. When you died, you woke up in your bed as if your experience had just been a dream. You're dressed in basic clothes. Everything you had carried was now gone by the explosion. You could go back, gather your things. But the thing that had hunted you... With a terrible feeling in your gut, you stood up. On wobbling legs, you walked towards the window, staring outside. A thick fog was veiling the forest around you in a grey mass. The thick tree logs looking like the legs of giants as their silhouettes barely managed to penetrate the mist. Perfect. Just perfect. You thought sarcastically. The hunting stand was a slightly elevated wooden building close to the mountain you had just died in. More than likely, what had hunted you was still out there. So your time was limited. After all, even though the fog was all-consuming, zombies and other freaks still remained in their hiding holes until the sun was gone. And so you wanted to reinforce the hut and face your fear. Otherwise, you may never go back into the mines again. And what then? Have it stalk you as its hunger increased in the overworld as well? No, nuh uh. This ends the same night it started. Taking out a few shuffles from your chest, you prepared the laying of a moat. Two meter wide, three meters deep. Attaching trap doors to the edges. With a stick, you could reach them and open them to make the jump easier to relieve, while at the same time giving your less agile foes no way of reaching you. Aside from falling into the pit, of course. Next, you sharpen as many sticks as you could, forcing them into the soil of the moat until you were satisfied with the primitive yet effective defense. 
covered in mud and dirt, you step back into the hut. After you climbed out of the pit. But what you didn't know was the fact that the monstrosity had been watching you all along. When the creeper blew you up, it had ignored your charred corpse, knowing fully well that somewhere on the surface you had reawoken. And the smell of your fear, anticipation and sweat was dragging it forward. The sun luckily was hidden by the fog. While it still hurt its eyes, they weren't outright burning. Being faced with the surface, being able to walk upon it, filled it with a feeling of victory. And that's when the faintest hint of your scent entered its nostrils. Heart pumping, leathery hide creaking with every movement. It went on all fours, its mouth stretched open. It crawled as fast as it could towards your location. You had taken position onto the hut's roof, having prepared four crossbows for faster firing. Sure, you had arrows and weapons here, but your last armor was right now just melted slag deep within the mountain. Thanks to the fog, the forest was dead silent. Not even the sound of wind was able to be heard. Night had come quicker than you had expected. The light of your torches giving you just enough view of your surroundings. From somewhere south you heard the noise of... Whistling? The sound what definitely didn't belong in a forest, however, or whatever was doing this, had given up on all forms of stealth. You turned, pointing your first bolted crossbow towards the sound, and there it was. Of course, it no longer felt like hiding. A wave of dread was overcoming you. You shook. You had never seen anything like it. The silhouette of a tall, almost starved-looking man was emerging from the fog. His jaw enlarged. So were his arms and legs, white eyes pulsating with murderous intent. That's when you notice Salvia dropping past its dagger-like teeth. His body was black and it was only thanks to his glowing eyes and shiny white teeth reflecting the torches that you had placed that you could even see him properly. It breathed heavily. Of course he saw you. Now without your armor, he was sure. His head twitched, excited. Expression changed. The man from the fog growled. And that's when you fired. The bolt burned itself into the ground at the tip of its toes. You reached for the same crossbow as the monstrosity began rushing forward. It crawled over sticks, stones, fallen logs like the giant spiders of the region. Again, you fired desperately, missing once again. The man finally had reached the pit. Grabbing the third crossbow, you threw your body back into the hut. You could hear it violently scream as it crashed into the pointy sticks. But judging by the sound of breaking wood, this barely did anything to stop it. And then it was silent. Only the sound of your own heartbeat could be heard. Your eyes widened at the sound of it whistling. Footsteps heavy. He had climbed onto the platform leading into the hut. The sticks did nothing but were a valid attempt. But... You should have run instead. Sure, he would have found you eventually, but... It would have chased you far beyond even the Farlands, but it would have given you a chance. 
Now you are cornered. Your trigger finger itched. And you fired the second his silhouette could be seen through the oak door square windows. The loud crash, the bolt shot through the window, hitting the man from the fog. He screamed loud, so loud you pressed your hands on your ears. But the sound that followed, it was worse. The noise of wood breaking beneath an almost infinite amount of violent strength. With horror, you watched the monstrosity enter. Bolt stuck in its shoulder. Pulling it out, he crushed it with his fingers. The smell of blood, dust and mildew was coming from him. He was so tall, he was walking with a slight hunch. He was no longer running. He had you cornered. He knew that. You knew that. Tears of fear were flowing out of your eyes. Now as you crawled as far back onto the cabin's corner as you could. His teeth like mirrors reflected your face, twisted into utter terror. Yes, yes, there it was. Your scent, the smell of a female. It entered his nostrils again. Getting on all fours. The man of the fog was still towering over you. Zalvia was hanging in long strings from his chin. And then, his large hand grabbed your green shirt. Strength overwhelming, force murderous, he threw you onto your bed, making you gasp in pain. With horror you watched as he climbed on top of you, claws digging into the fabric. Just barely grazing her skin. No, 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 no! You screamed, trying to resist. You threw, punched, kicked. You even tried biting. And suddenly his left hand slapped around your throat. The man from the fog began squeezing. You gasped pathetically. There was no chance. Not a single ounce of air was entering your lungs. Your eyes rolled back, but that's when he lessened his grip. Jump your mouth, a croak coming from your throat as you breathed. You no longer had the strength to fight with your mangled windpipe. You've had the pool of the man from the fog on your clothes again as he tore them apart, your eyes vaguely looking at his face. Weakly you reached a hand up defiantly, but all he did was intertwine his own fingers with yours. You gasped. It was an almost tender moment. If it wasn't for him immediately grabbing onto your hand, his nails digging painfully into your flesh. You realized what he was doing the moment he had thrown you onto your bed. He was toying with you, yes, but he also wanted you to understand how absolutely useless any attempts at fighting back were. Crying, you forced yourself to look away. It's when something heavy slapped onto your stomach. In a feeble attempt at saving your dignity, you crossed your legs, but there was no real point in trying. It was just a final feeble attempt at a woman trying to stay safe. An attempt that was destroyed by part of giant clawed fingers. They were now spreading your legs as far as they could without breaking your bones.